Good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner, live from Hardy's this uh, fine Saturday morning. A little brisk out there this morning, but hey, we'd expect that here in the middle of October. I did see on the weather, we're supposed to have a beautiful week coming up uh, in the 60s. So uh, make sure you, pl you make plans to get out there and enjoy it. Let's head back to last night as the Broncos traveled to Eveleth to face the 2-4 and four Golden Bears. And the Broncos were the better team in the first quarter last night, but it was scoreless after 12 minutes. Eveleth, com <coughs> excuse me, Eveleth Gilbert completed a drive with just over two minutes uh, into the second quarter and on a 30-yard touchdown pass from Kyle Sickle to Nick Baudet to take an 8-0 lead for the Golden Bears. Sickle would add two more touchdown passes before halftime, including a 65-yarder on the last play of the uh, half, and uh, that was kind of the, a backbreaker, the straw that broke the camel's back as the Golden Bears took a 20-0 lead into the locker rooms uh, as, the Bronco, or excuse me, as the Golden Bears took advantage of three Bronco fumbles in the second quarter. Evel Gilbert would fumble on their first from, play from scrimmage to start the second half, and the Broncos would get Armando Barrio into the uh, end zone on a one-yard touchdown run five plays later to cut the deficit to 20-7. to seven. The Golden Bears would answer back uh, just a couple of minutes later with another touchdown pass with six minutes left in the third quarter to make it 28-7, to seven, and that would be the final score. Kyle Sickle would throw four touchdown passes for Everett Gilbert in the uh, game for them. Armando Barrios, big game last night for him. He sets a new school record uh, last night with 42 carries, uh, breaking the old record of 41 by Nick Janty from 2012. He also also gained 236 yards. First time the uh, Broncos have had a 200-yard rusher in a game since that game uh, that Janty rushed 41 times. The Broncos will finish their regular season at home on Wednesday night against Virginia. The Little Fork Big Falls Vikings uh, went to uh, Reamer, I believe, is where they played this game as they took on Hill City Northland, and the Vikings lose by a final score of 56-14. to Jacob Pendergast and Mason Borman scored the touchdowns for the Vikings, and they will end their regular season on Wednesday at home at John Thompson Field against the Big Fork Huskies. The Bronco Volleyball team finished their regular season last night uh, as they hosted the 17 and one Duluth Marshall Hilltoppers. Marshall took uh, hold of the uh match early on and swept the falls 25-15, 25-13, 25-18. Bianca Carlson, she had 17 set assists, 6 kills, 2 aces, and 13 digs. Jenna Sullivan added 8 kills and 4 blocks, and Libby Miggins had 4 kills. The Broncos uh, complete their regular season now with a 13-9 record, and they'll open their playoffs in two Wednesdays on the 25th at home, uh, 7 o'clock match at home, and I'm I'm going to go out there right now. I'm going to go out and put it on the line. They will play the Proctor Rails in that first round match. And they played Proctor uh, last Saturday down at the ESCO tournament and uh, won in three sets. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it right now. Put it on your calendar. 7 o'clock, Falls High Gym, Bronco Volleyball team against the Proctor Rails in the opening round of the Section 7 2A playoffs. Fort Francis uh, High School football team uh, lost to St. Norbert Cel uh, Celtics out of Winnipeg last uh, yesterday afternoon by a final score of 36 to 14. That that makes the Muskies 2-4, and four, and they close out their regular season next Friday back up in Winnipeg against St. John's. High school scores from uh, around the uh, area last night. We'll start with the big schools. Cloquet improves to 7-0 and on the season with a 20-0 shutout of Duluth East. Duluth Denfeld, they get the better of hitting 20-5. Get that safety in there. North Branch 55, Grand Rapids 36. North Branch improves to 6-1 and one on the season, and Proctor wins the battle with Hermantown uh, in the battle for the hammer as Proctor shuts out Hermantown 19 to nothing and uh, looks like the Broncos if we look at the playoffs for the football team for the Broncos looks like they will be heading back down to uh, Terry Agerdell Field on uh, Tuesday the 24th to face Proctor I mean the QRF can change over the next week or so but it looks like things are pretty set that way that the uh, Broncos will be going to Proctor but we'll get you to, uh, caught up next Saturday on Coach's Corner and let you know for sure how things are going to turn out in other games, uh, Greenway, Nashua, Keewatin, they get a 20-8 to to win over Virginia. So now both Greenway and Virginia are 4-3. and three. I would say it this way. It looks like Greenway and Virginia will be the 4-5 seed. Virginia is going to be coming with something to play for next Wednesday when they take on the Broncos because they're either going to be going to Greenway or they're going to be playing Greenway at home and they're probably in the first round of the playoffs. So big game there uh, for uh, for the Broncos next week as Virginia comes to town. Esco 33 to nothing over Crosby-Ironton. 
Hamilton. Mora, 35-6, better than Aiken. And Pine City beats Moose Lake Willow River, 18-7. Bram moves to 7-0 on the season as they down Barnum, 36-6. That was basically the battle for the top seed in Section 7-2A. Bram looks like they're going to cruise through Section 7-2A. Deer River beats Chisholm. Uh, East Central 25-18 over Masabi East and Hinkley Finlayson 26-8 over Rush City. In nine-man football, Carlton four points better than McGregor 24-20. Cromwell Wright scores 50 points in the first quarter last night as they beat Onamia 57-8. Isle 32, Big Fork 22. Renshaw had over 500 yards rushing in the game, yet they only beat Ogilvy 32-19. Northwoods got the better of Floodwood 50-20 on Thursday night. Cook County in a battle of 5-1 and one teams beats MIB in Mountain Iron last night 16-8. Ely shuts out Silver Bay 38-0. Southridge gets a forfeit against Northeast Range as Northeast Range only had 11 healthy players this week and decided to forfeit instead of playing that game. And uh, Kelly or Northrum down Lake of the Woods in Isle, as I mentioned, already beat Big Fork 32-22. to College hockey last night, season in full force for the men and the women's now. Uh, Penn State at uh, Mariucci Arena, 3-1 to over the Gophers last night. Wisconsin beats Boston College 5-2. to Minnesota Duluth loses a heartbreaker to Bemidji State as uh, they're in playing a home-and-home and, home and uh, UMD. I'm a big UMD fan. That's why it's a heartbreaker, folks. Uh, they lead going into uh, late in the game, and then uh, Bemidji State scores four times in the third period to beat, defeat UMD 5-2. to Mankato beats number two to Boston University, 6-3. to three. Colorado College downs Alaska Anchorage, 6-1. to one. Denver, the number one team in the nation. They tied Notre Dame, who's ranked number four in the nation, at two. Ohio State ties uh, Rensselaer, 1-1. One, one. St. Cloud State, 6-3 to three over Alaska. Omaha uh, defeats Massachusetts, Lowell, 4-2. to two. And uh, North Dakota beats St. Lawrence by a score of 2-1. to one. In women's hockey last night, Minnesota better than 3-1, better than Bemidji State. Wisconsin, the number one team in the nation. They get uh, Mankato 3-2, to two, and Ohio State, after beating the Gophers twice last week in women's hockey, they beat UMD last night 2 to nothing. The MLB playoffs have uh, narrowed it down to four teams, and uh, the, uh, in the ALCS last night, Houston wins the uh, first game by a final score of 2-1 to one over the Yankees. The Yankees got a home run in the uh, top of the ninth, but that was the best they could do as uh, Dallas Keuchel struck out 14 Yankee batters through seven innings. Those two teams play game two today at 3 o'clock. The National League Championship Series gets started tonight in L.A. as the Dodgers play host to the Cubs. First pitch is scheduled just after 7 o'clock. What's happening locally today? The Broncos swimming and diving team is down in Hibbing for the true team meet. I believe if my information given to me is correct, the uh, diving is just getting started there and the swimming begins at 1 o'clock. The Bronco bowling team is in Grand Rapids for a noon uh, meet after their big uh, 3-0 win last week. The Lakers, uh, Fort Francis Lakers, are at uh, in Hoyt Lakes tonight to take on Minnesota at 7 o'clock. The Rainy River men's basketball team was just here. They just left here about a half hour ago from Hardy's. They're on their way to Thief River Falls where they will scrimmage Northland and Fergus Falls and I had a chance to talk to head coach Bill Engel and he's very excited about a chance to play two 40 minute uh, scrimmages against two of the maybe the better teams uh, in Minnesota Northern Minnesota Community College Basketball and evaluate his players and see what they've got as the season gets started in early November. The Gopher football team is at home tonight at TCF Bank Stadium at 7 o'clock. Supposed to rain cats and dogs. Is that a good thing for the Gophers? I think so. Uh, and the fact that they like to run the ball and hopefully that they'll uh, be able to do that and do it effectively against Michigan State. Hopefully they can get their first Big Ten win. That game's on BTN tonight. UMD's at Northern State at 1 o'clock. Bemidji State's at Minot, also at 1 o'clock. St. Cloud State hosts, hosts Moorhead at 3 o'clock. The uh, Bison, North Dakota State, they are at Youngstown State at a 6 o'clock game. And UND is in Montana to take on Montana at 2 o'clock. There are no top 25 matchups in major college football today. But there was two big games last night in case you uh, weren't uh, in the know. Clemson, the number two team in the nation, loses at Syracuse 27-24. to They're calling it the biggest upset in 40 years in college football. And then Washington State, who's been, well, beat USC a couple weeks ago, played well last week. They lose 37-3 to last night at Cal. Well, you just can't make this stuff up. you you, you got to watch every week and see, see what's going to happen. That's why they play the games. NHL tonight, the Wild take on Columbus. 
that game gets started at 7 o'clock. The home opener for the Wild, and hopefully they're going to have enough uh, forwards to be able to play. Uh, if you didn't hear, Charlie Coyle's out for 68 weeks with a broken fibula. Uh, facial fracture for Fel uh, Feligno. Uh, who else? Oh, Niederreiter uh, has got a, a bad ankle, high ankle sprain. So, uh, boy, I'll tell you, the Wild uh, get a good win in Chicago on Thursday night, but they came out of it uh, not, not very, very healthy. The Minnesota United uh, soccer team, they uh, play at L.A. tomorrow at 4 o'clock, and, of course, the Packers and the Vikings. How can we not mention that? That game gets started at noon pregame at 11 o'clock on your home for the Minnesota Vikings, K104. Let's talk about uh, former Broncos uh, playing uh, at the college level and above. Sydney Raboyne uh, for UND cross-country team. She's at home today for a meet. Taylor Hebner with the UMD cross country team. She was in Romeoville, Illinois last week. She is off this week. Lexi Erickson, she took second for her team last week and 32nd overall in their home meet for St. Kate's. They are out in Massachusetts for a run that I believe is just getting underway out there in Massachusetts. Brandon Bears and the UM uh, Morris football team, they lost 14-7 to to Martin Luther. They host McMurray College today at 1 o'clock. Maddie Filippiak and the Bemidji State Volleyball team. They lost 3 nothing to the number 3 team in the nation, Concordia St. Paul, last night. They are in Mankato this afternoon. The Rainy River Volleyball team, Isabella Edested and uh, Clara Palm, uh, on Wednesday, they were in uh, Ely to take on Vermilion, and uh, they get a 3-0 sweep. Bella had a great night. Uh, she was 4 for 8, hitting with a couple of kills, and uh, Clara Palm uh, played great in the back row as she went 6 for 6 with an ace while she was serving. Abby Koshik with the Minna, uh, with the Moorhead State uh, swimming team. She uh, wins last night in their opener of the season, 171 to 107 over Northern State, and she was a member of the 200 medley relay team that got the win. Willie Korn in the Brampton Beast of the uh, ECHL, the East Coast Hockey League. They are at Adir Adirondack excuse me, today, and they play Ma Manchester tomorrow. We'll take a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk cross-country uh, running with the uh, Broncos. You're listening to Coach's Corner, live from Hardy's on K104 and online at KS, or excuse me, at rjbroadcasting.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Coach's Corner for our second segment in uh, uh, all of a sudden, I've lost the attention of my, my crew. All of a sudden, they're watching TV over my head. What, what, oh, you're watching football. Well, I could see why your attention would be pulled away from uh, a conversation when there's football over my shoulder. As uh, Joined by uh, members of the cross-country team, Avery Savone, and yes, I remember now, and Joe Glowak. Did, you, you didn't think I could forget, would you? You're, you're, you're my favorite. I know. How, 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 how could I do that? John Kalman and Rachel Anderson joining me here in, in a row. And, uh, of course, it was Ohio Pike Week, and uh, they, we, we ran it on Tuesday this week. Anybody know the reason why we, why we changed it Tuesday from – it's always been on a Thursday. What, anybody, want, anybody want to venture up? A, a guess on that, on why, uh, why we uh, were where we, where we were? They all look at me dumbfounded. They have no clue. They didn't even know that it used to. They, they, they didn't even know that it used to be on on Thursday. So anyway, you guys just get out there and run, right, Avery? Yeah. You got to hold that microphone up, otherwise the people can't hear you at home. I don't want you, to say it wrong. You, 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 all you did was say yeah. Go ahead. You can put it right here and say yes. No. <laughs> why, boy? Why are you why are you fighting me this morning, Avery? What, what's the deal? All right. Let's talk about the Ohio Pike, and uh, we'll start with the girls. And uh, we talked a little bit after the after the race on uh, Tuesday, and uh, we talked a little bit. So you've had a few days to evaluate it. Uh, how do you think the girls did uh, on Tuesday in the Ohio Pike? I think our girls did pretty good. Ryan definitely did very well. She beat me, and she we PR'd. Both of us. Eighth grader, Ryan? Yeah. Eighth grader, okay. I should know that because her locker's right outside my classroom door, and it is the eighth grade class, so I should know that. So um, talk, talk about the rest of the team. Uh, who, what, what else uh, was, was going on there? Um, I believe Bailey came in after me. And, yeah, they all did pretty good. I think Ellen was, uh, was Ellen in fourth, and, and, and Rachel, oh, Summer, uh, yeah, that's right. And then... Uh, after that. Okay, so so that's what we had there. Uh, what about the boys, John? You, well, you, I'll let you uh, I'll take a hold of this one. See, so you're the the veteran, the senior, the the old guy. The just you only got a couple more times to do the show. That's what we just got done discussing. So talk about the boys' effort on Tuesday. All right. Well, I think we did we did really well on uh, Tuesday. We all came in. I think we are 
like a 22 second split, something like that. Joe was a little bit back. I mean, we were like 17, 42, 47, 49, 52, 18, 04. We were all a pack. I think we were only split by two guys. So we're really running strong now. We just need to move those times up a little bit to get those places and start winning meets. Joe, I don't know if we had a chance, to, uh, if you were there when I was discussing it, but we were discussing the fact that uh, I, I think after when I talked to Coach uh, to Coach Jelly, he talked about the fact that he was disappointed with the result because you guys are still 19 points behind Ely, but you guys ran, ran so well. It, 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 was it frustrating for you guys as well to run as well as you guys did and still be 19 points behind and take third place uh, in the meet behind uh, GNK and Ely? Yeah, obviously it's frustrating, but we use it as fuel to like do better in practice, we get up there so we're ready for sections. This is, uh, of course, uh, running at home. You only get to do it once out of the year. Rachel, is it? Is it? Does it become? A little more pressure because because it's at home, or is it or is it is it more fun because you know the course, you've been around it a few times, and it makes it a little bit easier. I would say it's a combination of both. It's definitely more fun having all the people there and everyone's coming to watch the home meet. Definitely more pressure because all the people are there to watch the home meet. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little bit of both. And of course, it's always fun, like I said, to have, to have the crowd and you. You know, those 4 or 4.30 meets are difficult for fans to get to. They're, they're, they're a tough time of the day, so people do like to come out and uh, see what's happening. Let's talk about the meet that's coming up this week. You guys are running in the IRCs uh, down at Hoyt Lakes, right? Yep. I, got, I got that right? Yep. Avery's shaking your head. She, she, they can't see you on radio. She's shaking your head. you got to say, go ahead. you got to say, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And uh, so uh, what, what, what's it like to run at Hoyt Lakes, Avery? For those of us that haven't been uh, been to Hoyt Lakes, what's the what's the key to running there? Run fast. <laughs> Run fast. Is there any key areas in the race where you, John, you know, that, that you try to take advantage? There's definitely a hill right towards like in the last half mile of the race. You got to climb. You got to go over a little bump, and then you're on a little flat stretch, and there's this long hill that just goes up for probably. I don't know, 100, 150 yards, and that's really where you can make a move coming yeah. into the last stretch of the race. So you guys have already been thinking about that. So has uh, has Coach had you out running the hill out here at the boat landing or anything in anticipation for that? Not yet. Not yet? Geez, Joe, you, 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 today's Saturday. You guys aren't running tomorrow. Well, you might be running tomorrow, running but you're not today. practicing tomorrow. You got Monday. You're going to go out and run that hill on Monday? No, no. we're supposed to run today. We're supposed to find some hills. Ah. Little Fork's got some hills. Little Fork has some hills. Why would we be in Little Fork? Well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on in Little Fork, Joe? I got a shack. Okay. Got the shack? You, you're looking for some birds? Yep, birds and deer. Birds and deer. It's not deer season, is it? It's bull season. Ah, see, you get. I, I don't want to get you guys in trouble, but you, John, you, you, you got the camel on. I hardly. I see you come. You pull into the driveway today uh, here at Hardy's, and you got weeds falling out. You've been out, out mud bogging and in whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm out by a ray instead of a little fork. So, let's talk about uh, the section meet uh, coming up. That's uh, Thursday, the uh, 26th. I had to think about it for a second. Uh, in Cloquet. And uh, we, we just got done talking about the keys of running in Hoyt Lakes. What's the key uh, to running in Cloquet? Who wants the first stab? Well, I mean, first thing especially, we got to keep running as a pack. I mean, obviously, we got to run faster. And we really got to look for those green jerseys for Greenway, the black ones in North Shore. Ely, we got to make sure to get. Don't forget about of, Esco. And Esco, yep. We got to look out for the blue ones too. But I mean, we got to make sure to stay ahead of those guys, especially towards the finish, because that's where we've struggled. Like we had, I don't know if you saw at the end of the race yesterday, we had some, some of us get beat a little bit on that kick by not only the Greenway guys, but the Ely guys. It, it is so, it is so interesting to think about th that there's five teams. In, yeah. in Section 7A, boys, that legitimately, I would say, in my mind, have a chance to be one of those top two teams. Is Does that make the pressure, Joe, does it make it easier to run, harder to run, easier to get ramped up for it? How does, how do, how does it make you feel, and how do you think it makes it feel for the team getting ready for, for a couple of weeks away? 
I definitely gets us amped up because we know we can compete. And right now we're kind of the underdogs, so we don't have as much pressure. So we just got to go out there and worry about running our race. It, 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 and okay, I, I I I did my 5Ks and 10Ks many many years ago, and I I did the whole I did the whole running thing. What is there? Just some days, Avery. I'll ask you. Is there just some days when you don't have it? You just you, you you can't find that last gear that you're trying to find when you're out running five thousand meters. That that three miles. There, there's just some days when it's not there. Well, obviously, yeah. Sometimes it's harder to run than others, but you just gotta try and find it and hope for the best. Is is, is there sprint your hardest into the shoot? Is there a uh, is there a pregame uh, race meal a uh, night before that meal that we, everybody has a, a little like psychological to try to, to carb up and or lucky meal guys anything? Well, you're supposed um, to eat spaghetti. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, you're, you're supposed to eat spaghetti. Get so you, carbs. Joe, you, don't. Joe, you don't sound like that. That that happens. Why well, I don't really think that hard about it. <laughs> yeah, no one well, knows. you're 16 or 17 years old. You guys can eat anything, right? I mean, yeah, you know, right. I mean, it doesn't matter what you eat. Doesn't you're, matter. You're a kid. You're, yeah. you're, you're a kid. You can you can do whatever. No, no, seriously, no pregame pre Oh, well, I mean, I I don't know. I eat carbs the night before, and I mean, I have the same exact routine every morning of the meet, you know, tie my spikes the same way, put my uniform on in the same order, do everything all exactly the same every day. Before Get your meet. math homework done. Oh, well, that comes, you know. <laughs> that, that just gets done when I'm Yeah. Whenever, whenever there's a spare moment. How about for you, Rachel? Uh, anything anything that the girls do as a team, uh, maybe ritual-wise, to, to kind of get everybody uh, in the mood? Um, well, before the meet. Oh, well, before the meet, every day, not every day, but before every meet, we get together and huddle and do all our encouragement, and then we pray as a team. But nothing as crazy as John, like, tie everything the same way and we're a little more laid back laid back <laughs> a little more laid back. john do you, you accept that that you need to be do you need to be laid back <laughs> They obviously are performing better than I mean, look at their results versus well, us. I mean, well, I don't know if that necessarily means you can't be superstitious about things, right? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think as far as a mental thing goes, it helps. A, I mean, it definitely helps to be relaxed. That's That can really help in a race, but, I mean, being superstitious kind of helps, too, because, I mean, then you, you know, you're doing everything the same way. I mean, if you think you're having a good race because you're doing that, you probably are. So... Running wise, now practice wise, over these final couple of weeks, is it are things going to be going downhill? Are we going to be doing less miles? Are we going to be doing more sprinting? What's what 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 do you expect, Coach Jelly, to come up with the, in practice over the last couple of weeks to get this team prepared? Uh, oh, we're gonna cut the minutes a little bit, but I mean we're gonna do the same workouts and just cut the minutes down a little bit, do a little more speed instead of just you know really bringing that distance down. We want to keep trying to do the same kind of workouts so we don't, you know. Yeah, Joey, really, so we're not tapering anymore. We're not? Not tapering anymore. We're, we're not tapering anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, Avery, has that got you nervous? <laughs> were, you, were you were hoping no, for a little... I just was not informed of this information. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you know, you got, you got to pay attention, Avery, I guess. That's maybe he the... He doesn't the tell us anything. Us. He only tells the boys stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, and no. In the loop. Right, right, right now, oh, boy, things are falling apart as we speak here for the girls' cross-country team. Not kept in the loop. Nobody... Actually, he's going to wrap it up for you guys because now you, they're going to taper the boys, but you guys, Avery, you're going to run further. How do you feel about that? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that that's no good. Uh, I didn't say let's, it was no good. Let, let's, let's talk about a couple of the uh, younger kids coming up on both teams. Let's start with the girls. Uh, we, we talked about some of the – we talked about uh, Ellen Wendell's and uh, Summer Hessendall. Hessendall, and we talked about – Nora Sullivan. Nora Sullivan. Bailey Herberg. Okay. Ryan Ford. And Ryan Ford. Uh, all are those all eighth graders? No, only Ryan's an eighth grader. The rest of them are all seventh graders. We okay. have a really, really young team this year. There's only three of us that have ever ran before <laughs> in cross country, at least. So, how about for the boys? Who who's, who's coming up? Uh, Joe on the 
on the young side there that uh, we can look to be pushing this group of sophomores and juniors and, and now that John's going to be retiring soon, uh, who, who's going to come up and, and push you guys and replace John coming up? Oh, we got Parker Simonin and Colin Koshing going back. No one can replace John. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> can replace John. Wow. That, that's respect right there, John Coleman. What do you <laughs> Who else do you see? Maybe, maybe a maybe a diamond in the rough. Maybe a, a seventh or eighth grader out there that you're kind of looking. And you're saying this this kid could because you know guys. We, four or five years ago, this is what we were talking about. You, we were sitting. I'm sitting right in the same exact place, and we were talking about you young guys that were coming up and we're going to make a run at this thing, and you're making a run at it. But who's 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 going to be there, John? Do you think to do the same thing? Oh, I mean, really, it's hard to tell. We don't got a lot of young guys. I mean, we got our varsity guys, and then besides that, I mean, we got Nate and Max Dremel. I mean, if they stick with it, I think they'll definitely improve. We got uh, Colin. Well, we got, yeah, Colin Koschick, Matt Worley. Uh, yeah. So. Well, guys, I appreciate you coming in this morning and then uh, chatting with me. I wish you guys best uh, best luck at the IRCs on Tuesday. I don't think I said that uh, when we were talking about it earlier and, of course, at the section meet uh, the following Thursday. I appreciate you guys coming in this morning. Avery Savonin, Joe Glowak, John Kalman, and, and Rachel Anderson joining me here. We'll take a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk Mr. Pete Foundation. You're listening to Coach's Corner, live from Hardy's on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. Welcome back to... Coach's Corner, as uh, we got done talking to the uh, cross-country teams, we're, we're joined by a, an oldie but a goodie, uh, Mike Bolstead, of course, uh, master of, uh, this is probably like his 22nd appearance on Coach's Corner, I'm going to give a, a round number on that, and, and we got two newbies, we got uh, Kim Sud Sundino Pelt and uh, Gina Skopinski, and uh, we, we, we're, we're going to talk Mr. Pete Foundation, yep. and of course, uh, tonight, uh, the big night, uh, the, the annual fundraiser, the fourth annual fundraiser here, and uh, Kim will get started. Uh, yeah. we, we, obviously, I think everybody knows Mr. Pete. It, it, it doesn't, mm -hmm. that would be a shock if you didn't, but talk about what, how this got started and where, where this thing has grown from, yeah. from its first year. Absolutely. So... Gina and I had a, um, a brainchild three years ago. Um, we were talking in, over the summer about um, how we wanted to honor Mr. Pete, who I had as a fourth grade teacher, um, Gina had as a dad, so <laughs> quite <me>. impactful. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so we were talking about a way to honor his legacy um, through honoring teachers as well. So um, Mr. Pete was obviously very innovative in his classroom. So we wanted to um, carry that legacy on by helping teachers be innovative, innovative in their classrooms. So we wanted to start a fund for teachers to apply, apply for grants and be able to, um, you know, have some additional instruction and additional tools in their classroom. So we started the Mr. P Foundation and um, we jumped right in and we, we wanted to um, start it in our own community. We both live in Duluth, the Hermantown area now, um, but we wanted to bring it back here and, and really um, help out the school where we grew up and where he was a teacher and a coach for so long. So we have, over the years, probably raised about $50,000, probably more than $50,000, um, given out 17 grants, and the number is climbing even today as we speak. So we're just really excited to help schools in International Falls and Little Fork um, to carry on the legacy and, and think outside the box. Gina, but that, that's, that's pretty good stuff there. What, what, what do you want to add to that? Um, yeah. I. We'll just echo what Kim said. It, for me, it, it kind of started as a form of therapy. My dad was sick at the time, so we were, we were right in the middle of really the hardest part of his illness where we were trying to navigate that. And so there was just so much bad going on at home that it gave me a good outlet to think about him in a positive way. And so I just threw myself into it mostly just to do something good with something that was so bad. That, that's that's good stuff, Mike. Of course, we, we we chat every week, but you 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 carry a big torch, I think, for this because because you you, you knew you knew him so well. Uh, you, you guys were you guys were in the hockey program together. Uh, talk about what it what it means for you for for, for this weekend because uh, I I see you get passionate about a lot of things, but I, I see you get very passionate about this. Well, yeah, I mean that, that's a compliment. I I, I think. Basically, I'm kind of a voice of a large group, okay, and I, I kind of 
me and a few other players like Raboin and, and, and Neil Sheehy, and, and they're out of town, okay? So I kind of uh, take it over from here. But I, I'm very, you know, very small piece of a large group of hockey players that he had. And, and I, yeah, I have passion about this. And, and But, you know, Mr. Pete was close to, like, thousands of hockey players. So I'm not, like, the guy he liked the most or anything like yeah. that. I want to make that clear. Um, but... Uh, Every year, I, I, I try to share all the emails I get from the large contingent of hockey players with Gina and her family, and they're darn good stuff. I mean, this is like Paul Nevinen and, and Robin Anderson. They, they wrote very meaningful notes saying, you know, we're not going to quit doing this. We're going to continue to do it. We're going to try to help the Mr. Pete Foundation. Again, we're, we're a small part of the whole program, but we try to contribute as much as we can. And if you go to the auction tonight, those listed on the radio, there's a, a lot of great prizes there, and uh, uh, we try to help out with that every year. And uh, I guess it's just a, it's a big deal to us because um, I probably wouldn't uh, be sitting here today if it wasn't for him. So. And I think Mike is being a little bit humble. <laughs> he said there's there are small parts. Um, Mike has brought in, um, you know, funded so many grants for for the foundation and just been a big presence and, and a very valuable part of um, our foundation and our fundraising. So um, I think this is a great time to just publicly thank Mike for everything that, that he does and, and thank the, the broader hockey community as well. Yeah, absolutely. Those notes the first year blew us away and there was all of them had tucked $100 in a card that they sent literally all over the country and they all hand wrote a note and my sisters and my mom and I just sat there like, oh my gosh, and I remember sitting down and reading them to my dad um, just so that he could hear them as well. Um, but then which was amazing in and of itself, but then year after year after year he shows up and year after year after year we get a whole list of people that are still saying thank you and so for for me it just blows my mind that they're continuing to do that I think it really says a lot so we really really appreciate it. Yeah, and a large group of us is the 95 state tournament team led by Johnny Austin. Johnny always uh, whether it's a note or whatever he can do always has nice things to say so it's that's the whole thing about this is he touched lives that were players in the 70s all the way to players in the new you know 2000 2005 so um boy i, I coached for maybe five total years and and uh it was tough <laughs> <laughs> i could just imagine the the nights he came home and then the peterson family had to listen to michael kind of you know, feel bad or maybe even cry because I've I've cried on my, listening to yeah. some of the things. So my mom used to say that he was raising every kid in town <laughs> except for his own, <laughs> which was a, which was a joke, but sort it's, of true. It's sort of true. Yeah. I, I, I've I've heard that in in, in my household. Yeah. I've never, I've heard that comment. So I, I and I understand it. And 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 there's there there's there's a calling there somewhere in there. Let's talk about tonight. Uh, social hour, I believe, uh, in the in the silent auction, five to seven. Five to seven. And uh, I suppose I should start with this. Can people still get a ticket? We have a few limited tickets available. Um, if someone would like to purchase a ticket, um, it's probably best to email us at mrpetefoundation at gmail dot com just to make sure that we still have a, a couple of seats available. But we can definitely sneak some people in. It's um, it's a really fun time. We have I think about. 160, 170 people tonight coming. Um, so we have the silent auction and raffle and a few fun games uh, as fundraisers. And we're also honoring um, Kevin Gordon tonight um, in, with the Mr. Pete Foundation Legacy Award. So we um, are really excited about that because Kevin's really um, carried on the legacy not only in the teaching profession but also in, in the hockey um, realm as well, taking over fall summer hockey and and all of that. So I'm yeah, how, how, that. how proud would your father be tonight, Gina, of, of the selection you guys made to uh, honor Kevin? Oh, absolutely. We ha we took nominations, and so we got a you know a handful of really awesome nominations, and all of them would have been perfect. But um, when we saw Kevin's name come up, all all of us were just like, "Yep, that's the one this year." Um, my my dad absolutely loved him, and um, I, you know, there's a strong relationship there. He's still doing fall summer, summer yeah. hockey. So we called it hockey school when I was little, because um, you know it had to be school. 
Um, so yeah, it, it was the perfect pick, and I'm looking forward to seeing him and telling him thanks. And um, the response has been overwhelming to that nomination in general. Just um, lots of thank yous, lots of action online, lots of people saying that you know Gordon was a huge part of their life. Yeah. So it's fun to see that duplicated. Absolutely. And uh, we, 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 I know Mike, you and I were talking about the silent auction guys, you, you, the things you got coming in. Uh, I don't know, maybe this maybe this will pull some people in. Did, 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 did you get the uh, jersey from Toronto? I, I'm dying to know. I've been waiting <laughs> to talk to you to this morning to find out. Did we get the Austin Matthews? Well, there's good news and bad news. Oh. It is. It, it, is has, it has been sent. Huh? Okay. But it's not here. But it's coming right, right from Toronto, so I'm guessing... Uh, not not saying anything bad about the Canadian Postal <laughs> Service, but I, I think it takes a little bit longer from the the, the okay. Canadian side. So if it doesn't get here today, we'll have it for uh, We talked briefly about it. Uh, uh, I think Gina and Kim might even put a like an auction item out, so people that can't attend the event oh, out of I, state. We'll stuff. look into look, doing yeah. that. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd be fun. I, that that would be that would be very interesting to see what kind of. Or they, they can we, just save it for next year. Well, well yeah, and we, um, Neil Sheehy donates a lot of wild, very, very good wild tickets every year. And so we were just talking about maybe taking a couple sets of those as well and doing them with the, with the Toronto jersey and just seeing what happens with the online platform because I know from the cards we got when Dad died that there are people all over um, that are following the Mr. P Foundation and might get involved that way by bidding online. Yeah, obviously tough for everybody to get here to, uh, yep. to the falls uh, uh, at, maybe at this time of the year to uh, to do that and maybe that that's a that's a very uh, interesting uh, thing what else what else you guys uh, got in the silent auction that I that I'm going to be disappointed that I'm going to get a, <laughs> a chance to miss because I bought a ticket a couple of weeks ago and then uh, I got a chance to go to the Gopher football game tonight oh in nice. the rain <laughs> I know I know what I would do I, I'm so excited you'd be here <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Because you did your goal for game already yeah, this year, I Michael. Did. What else? What else you guys got, Kim? Um, we have quite a few. We have a ton of baskets that are that are great for for everyone. Just um, our friends in the community and and you know the teachers have come through with just some great baskets. But we also have gym time at Falls High School, um, pool time, two hours of ice time at the arena. So really fun things that the, the district has helped us with. Uh, Some of the bigger ticket items, um, Steve Sharon donated a timeshare oh. um, anywhere in the U.S., which is a big one. I'm going for that one. Um, and Rainy Lake Houseboats yeah. donated a houseboat trip. Um, Thunderbird donated a pontoon rental and, and dinner. dinner after, which is really exciting. Um, there's a kayak there this year, which is oh. really cool. Um, really, there's a ton, a really ton of great items mm -hmm. over there waiting to be bid yeah. on. Bulldog hockey tickets, I think. So. Yep. Go nice. dogs. Very, very, go dogs. <laughs> Absolutely. Go dogs. A tough one last night. I shake my head. I, <laughs> I, 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 I was so excited during the football game that they were up, and then all of a sudden it was just like, ding, 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 oh. that, tonight, well, tonight, tonight's the night. Tonight's the night back at Amsway. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. What, what, what's, what's left, ladies, that we, we need to address here? Just one more thing. Our theme for this year is thank you. So um, we really want to say thank you to the people who have supported us through the past three years. We want to say thank you to the teachers who have applied for grants and just teachers in general who are dedicated, dedicating their lives um, to teacher or to the students of the community and um, you know every we're realizing now how how impactful every teacher is and, and we're, we're able to see it we also want to thank our sponsors um, packaging corporation of america has sponsored us as our um, our name sponsor for the past four years and we couldn't pull this off uh, without them because all of our donations go straight to to grants so uh, it's our sponsorships that really help um, help us pull off this great event gina anything else to add to that um, no, I don't think so. I think we covered all of our bases. Yeah. So come on, come on out. If not this year, next year. Um, it's really a fun night. It's a happy night. Um, we, we went to the school a couple weeks back, Kim and I, and just photographed and shot video of the kids using the stuff that we've bought nice. over the years. And so we're going to highlight that. Like she said, our, our theme this year is kind of thank you and just gratitude so that the people that show up every year at the Mike Bolsteads of the world, um, they can actually see where their money is going. So we're going to we're gonna do a video of that tonight. Um, we have a bunch of the 
like total number of dollars that we've donated, all of the projects highlighted, so that people can actually see their money going to work at the school. So, and we'll um, put that on our Facebook page too yes, after tonight. For those of you that can't make it tonight, it will be online um, after tonight as well too, so people can see what's been going on with the Mr. Wheat Foundation. Awesome, Mike. You got something to add? Sure, I can add stuff. Um, <laughs> you, 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 you put the microphone up there. I'm like, oh, he's, he's, got, he's, like got some, he's got something he wants to say because there's, there's something clicking in there. <laughs> there's a, there is also, again, Michael taught us a lot of things, and he did say being on time is very important, but he didn't say getting stuff to things is important. <laughs> So we do have a hockey jersey that Bob Mason got for the Minnesota Wild. That's going to be there tonight. It's a Jared Spurgeon uh, jersey. I, I think it's a new new model. New model. I, so Bob, Bill has that. So <laughs> I have to give Bill a call here pretty quick and say they need it before the auction. Yes. So uh, and then we got a Delvin Cook uh, college jersey from Florida State. Nice. That should be really nice for the football people. And then a Jim Kelly Hall of Fame football jersey. Wow. Uh, that they're taking with them right now over to the Hall. Oh, and then uh, hopefully that Toronto Maple Leafs jersey gets there, and then uh, all is done. Mike Bolstead, the Jersey King. He is. He, you, you'd be surprised who he has connections to get to. All right, we're yeah. gonna, we're, we're, I'm gonna. Before we leave, I'm gonna give you. Uh, can, uh, uh, how are the Wild gonna survive this uh, forward injury epidemic that's going through the team right now? Well, in email and Bob, I told him, I said, I am available. <laughs> uh, all I want is a jersey. I don't need a salary, so I, I'll keep uh, the salary again. Uh, there you go, because they only got a couple yeah. hundred thousand. And you'll, then, you'll play for a couple hundred bucks. You know, good hockey teams survive anima uh, turmoil, animosity, injuries. Uh, Bruce Boudreau, I think, is uh, craving this. <laughs> I mean, he is. I mean, I get to coach, and that's what he really gets to do now. Sure. Is he's got to plug in four players, five players that are minor leaguers and and he gets to play the cunning who's going to play tonight probably kyle Rao, who's a minnesota kid i uh, don't know who else they're bringing up but this is an opportunity for the players in the farm systems to show that they can play at the nhl level whether it's for the wild or whether it's for another team next year so i think he's actually looking forward to this if they can somehow go 500 over the next month i think that would be a great accomplishment and that's probably uh, a thing they're saying in the locker was let's take one game at a time and uh, let's stay in it and uh, we're losing uh, Coil for eight weeks and Nino for three weeks. And even though his face is probably a miss, <laughs> <laughs> a mishmash, uh, um, Felino will be out for one week. So uh, Parisi and Granlin are both still out. So that's five of their top nine forwards. So I don't know you guys are big Wild fans. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, and uh, so opening night uh, finally at home tonight against the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. That'll be a tough game, yeah. and uh, we'll go for there. Kim Opel, Gina Spinsky, Mike, as always, Bolstead, thank yeah. you. <laughs> guys, good luck tonight. I hope everything goes uh, as well as you guys have planned it. Thank you, thank so, you so much. much. We'll take a final break here. We'll come back, and we'll wrap it up here from Hardy G. Listening to Coach's Corner on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com. Well, welcome back to Coach's Corner. I want to thank my guests this morning, of course, uh, Avery Savonin and, and uh, John Kalman and Joe Glowack and Rachel Anderson from the uh, Bronco Cross Country teams and, of course, to Mike Bolstead and Kim Opelt and Gina Skopinski for being here this morning to talk about the Mr. Pete Foundation. Uh, just uh, always uh, good to talk about those things that have a tie to sports and get a chance to talk about them uh, uh, in the mornings and uh, uh, to do that. Let's quickly talk about the uh, week that was uh, last Saturday. The Lakers got a couple of goals from Skyler Lentz and Nick Lucas, but it wasn't enough as they lost 6-2 to two to the Dryden Ice Dogs. The Bronco Volleyball team was in Esco. They went 2-2 two and two down there. They lost to Hermantown beat Southridge, lost to Duluth Denfeld, but beat Proctor in three. Again, I believe that the Broncos will be playing Proctor at home uh, in a couple of Wednesdays in the first round of the playoffs. The Bronco cross country teams were down in Duluth for the Swain Invitational. I feel bad now. I should have talked about how tough the Swain was. I mean, you talk about these other places. I'm sure the Swain uh, tough to uh, go there. The Bronco boys team placed seventh overall in a huge, huge meet. Uh, great meet there. They did score 250. North Shore won it with 115. Mora was second. Esco was third. Uh, that just tells you again how competitive Section 7A uh, is. Jake Erickson was 38th, Justin Besh 39th, and Hunter Wilson was 48th. The girls did not run an entire uh, team at the uh, Swain, but uh, Avery Savonin was the top finisher in 61st. The bowling uh, team for the uh, Falls went 3-0 last week in their first meet 
in Hibbing. No action on Sunday, no action on Monday. Tuesday, LBF got a big win uh, over the uh, Chisholm Blue Streaks in four sets, 25-23, 25-18, 20-25, and 25-17. Emily Franz led the way with 10 kills and three blocks. The... Um, Bronco volleyball team was in Greenway at Coleraine on uh, Tuesday. They uh, lose in three sets, 25-9, 25-13, 25-20. Uh, Jenna Sullivan had eight kills and five blocks. Bailey Millette added eight kills as well. The 50th annual Heil Pike was on Tuesday. Big, uh, nice celebration. Uh, Dick Ostert said some nice words uh, before the uh, meet about uh, Heil Pike. And uh, they had T-shirts for sale, so it was a, a pretty big to-do. The Broncos came in third place with 76 points. GNK had 46 Ely 57. Uh, individually, Jake Erickson 12th, John Coleman 13th, Hunter Wilson 16th, Justin Besh 17th, and Joel Glowak 18th. Romeo uh, Deffy was the top finisher for the Fort Francis boys. The Bronco girls uh, ended up in 7th place as a team. Ely was in first, GNK was second, Ryan Ford individually 10th, Avery Silvone 15th, Haley Herberg 32nd, Ellen Wendell's 42nd, and Summer Hessendahl 54th. Tori uh, Torasiva was the top finisher for the Muskie Girls as she took 24th place as the team finished in 10th place. The Voyager Volleyball team was in Ely on Wednesday. They got the better of Vermilion in three sets, 25-7, 25-10, and 25-10. Uh, Chelsea Catabeta was served very well with five ace serves. On Thursday, the LBF uh, volleyball team wrapped up their regular season. They lose to MIB in three sets. Danielle Pekarski led the way with four kills and three blocks. The Vikings have ended their regular season with a 4-17 and record. Looks like, and I say it looks like, they're still a week away till this becomes final, but it looks like the uh, Vikings will be in Hill City on Monday the 23rd for their opening round match. The Bronco volleyball team was in Deer River on Thursday. They lose in four sets, 16-25, and then 25-22, 25-30. 13, 25, 20. Jenna Sullivan had seven kills and Bailey Millette eight kills. The girls uh, swimming and diving team uh, was at home against Northeast Range. Uh, they got the better of them, 141 to 29. The Broncos took 11 first places out of 12 events. Lindsay Lucy, a double winner in the 200 free and the 100 breaststroke. Amelia Stewart, also a double winner in the 200 IM and the 100 free. Whitney Gwynn won the diving. Braden Aker won the 100 butterfly. Emma Erickson was first in the 50, or excuse me, in the 500 free and Taylor Sears was uh, first in the 100 backstroke. The Bronco football team uh, dropped a 28-7 decision to Eveleth Gilbert last night. The LBF uh, Vikings uh, football team lost 56-14 to Hill City Northland. The Bronco volleyball team finished up their regular season last night. They lose in three sets to uh, Duluth Marshall at home 25-15, 25-13, and 25-18. And again, it looks like they'll open up against Proctor on Wednesday the 25th in the playoffs. The Fort Francis football team dropped a 36-14 decision to St. Norbert's. They have their final regular season game coming up next Friday in Winnipeg. What's going on uh, locally? Again, today the bowling team is in Grand Rapids for a meet there. The girls swimming and diving team are in Hibbing for the true team meet. The Lakers are in Hoyt Lakes to take on Minnesota and the Rainy River men's basketball team. They have their opening season scrimmage out in Thief River. No action on Sunday or Monday. Tuesday had an extremely busy day. The girls swimming and diving team is at home against War Road at a 5 o'clock meet. Uh, the Lakers will be at home against English River at 7.30 on Tuesday night. The Rainy River men's basketball team has another scrimmage down in Bemidji on Tuesday. The Rainy River volleyball team will be at Itasca on 6.30 on Tuesday. And the cross country teams, the big news there on a Tuesday, they have the Iron Range Conference meet in Hoyt Lakes at 4 o'clock. Of course, MEA week next week. That means on Wednesday we've got football. The Bronco football team will be home against Virginia. We'll have the game for you with the pregame at about 6.40 and the uh, opening kickoff at 7 o'clock as the Broncos take on the Blue Devils. The Viking football team, they will be hosting Big Fork at John Thompson Field also at 7 o'clock. The Fort Francis boys and girls hockey teams, they'll get their regular season started next week as they will be in Winnipeg from Thursday through Sunday to play a plethora of games. The Rainy River volleyball team will be down at uh, Anoka Ramsey for a pair of matches as they will take on Riverland and Rochester on Thursday. On Friday, the Lakers will be back down in Hoyt Lakes to take on the Minnesota Iron Rangers and the Rainy River volleyball team will have two more matches on Friday at Anoka Ramsey. Next Saturday, the bowling team has their only home meet of the year uh, right across the street here. That begins at noon. The Lakers will be home at next Saturday for a uh, match, uh, a game against Thief River Falls and the Rainy River women's 
men's basketball team will have their season opening scrimmage. They will be at Anoka. It's been a great morning. We've uh, gone past the 10 o'clock hour. Uh, again, thanks to all my guests uh, for being here. Thanks to everybody here at Hardy's for taking care of those guests. Thanks to Preston for coming in and uh, filling in for the boys this weekend, pressing all the buttons back at the station. But most of all, thank you for listening to Coach's Corner. Live from Hardy's on K104 and online at rjbroadcasting.com.